Seven of the Trump administration, and we have breaking news on the Russia case tonight. We learned today Robert Mueller plans to speak to the former spokesman for the Trump legal team, Mark Corallo, who resigned earlier this summer. And the significance is big, given this story breaking in The New York Times just tonight, which reports Mueller plans to ask Corallo about the statement President Trump and his advisors drafted. Turns out as a cover story to explain the Trump Tower meeting that Don Jr. accepted with several Russian nationals. The Times says, quote, Mr. Corallo is planning to tell Mr. Mueller about a previously undisclosed conference call with Mr. Trump and Hope Hicks, the White House communications director, according to the three people cited earlier in the article. Mr. Corallo plans to tell, planned to tell investigators that Ms. Hicks said during the call that emails written by Donald Trump Jr. before the Trump Tower meeting in which the younger Mr. Trump said he was eager to receive political dirt about Mrs. Clinton from the Russians will never get out. That left Mr. Corallo with concerns that Ms. Hicks could be contemplating obstructing justice, the people said. Hope Hicks' attorney notably denies she ever said this. You'll remember the cover story about that meeting was that it was mostly about Russian adoptions. Now we turn to the other big news developing tonight. Senior administration officials are telling NBC News that it is likely that highly controversial secret memo about the Russia inquiry, which has pitted the White House against the FBI, will indeed be released tomorrow. That memo is the work of House Republicans, and it alleges anti-Trump bias at the FBI and the Department of Justice, and that investigators improperly obtained warrants to surveil a member of the Trump presidential campaign. The House Intelligence Committee, led by Republican California Congressman Devin Nunes, voted Monday to release that memo to the public. The memo has been at the White House, which has final say on its release. Last night, after delivering his State of the Union address, the president on the way out was overheard all but assuring a House member it would be done. Let's release the memo. The FBI has argued against the memo's release and made an unprecedented move with this statement. Quote, the FBI was provided a limited opportunity to review this memo the day before the committee voted to release it. We have grave concerns about material omissions of fact that fundamentally impact the memo's accuracy. Even though the bureau director, Christopher Wray's name is not on that statement, it will still be seen as a direct challenge to President Trump and the White House. It's not the first time this week that Wray has weighed in on the memo. Sources tell NBC News that Monday, Wray and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein went to the White House and asked the chief of staff, John Kelly, not to make that memo public. Late this afternoon, Devin Nunes released his own response to the FBI's objections having stonewalled Congress's demands for information for nearly a year. It is no surprise to see the FBI and DOJ issue spurious objections to allowing the American people to see information related to surveillance abuses at these agencies. Regardless, it's clear that top officials used unverified information in a court document to fuel a counterintelligence investigation during an American political campaign, close quote. The top Democrat on that committee, House Intel, Adam Schiff of California, has new complaints on this memo tonight. We'll get to those in just a moment. And there is also reporting from The New York Times that points to the latest effort by President Trump to put pressure on an official involved in the Russia investigation. This time, it's that name again, Rod Rosenstein, Deputy Attorney General. The paper says, quote, Mr. Rosenstein was also asked by the president last month, whether he was, quote, on my team, according to an official briefed on the exchange. You may remember Donald Trump told former FBI Director James Comey, I need loyalty, I expect loyalty. That was according to Comey's sworn testimony. Washington Post reported that during their first face-to-face -face meeting in the Oval Office last May, the president asked the FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, who he voted for in the 2016 election. Earlier tonight, Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut had this reaction to the new report that the president wanted to know if Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein was, quote, on his team.
This feels like a really dangerous day. Uh, news of the president once again uh, asking for loyalty from a law enforcement officer whose loyalty is only supposed to be to the country he serves and the rule of law. Member of the U.S. Senate having called this a dangerous day. Let's bring in our leadoff panel for what is also a very busy Wednesday night. Jennifer Rogers, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, now the executive director for Columbia Law School's Center for the Advancement of Public Integrity. Clint Watts, former FBI special agent, is back with us. And Ashley Parker, White House reporter for The Washington Post. Much obliged to all three of you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Jennifer, uh, let's go back up to the top of our reporting which is the New York Times reporting tonight and Hope Hicks, the Wall Street, the White House communications director. She, again, is denying those comments through an attorney. But what if it turns out she said something like no one will ever see those emails as a matter of law? Well, it depends, right? It depends what she meant. If she said it in a way that's kind of speculative, like I don't think they'll ever get out because so few people know about them, then that's not necessarily uh, signaling that she plans to actually engage in obstruction of justice. But what's key to me, and you know, we'll of course see what the Mueller team makes of it, but Corallo, that's kind of his take. His take was that she may be actually talking about obstructing justice, and that's so important to him and troubling to him that he ends up quitting. So clearly that's kind of going to be his take on it to the Mueller team, and he was there. I mean, something that's really important, of course, when you're evaluating what somebody says is how it sounds. What is the tone? Uh, and that is something that Corallo can give that you know none of the rest of us are going to be able to weigh in on. So that, to me, is very important. And Clint, as an FBI man, how easy is it to put your hands on the very email she's talking about. Isn't that kind of step one of a modern investigation? For sure. Step one is always, you know, go to the search warrants, go to the subpoenas, go to the investigative materials. You're going to look at financial records, any sort of communication between any of these people. That's the baseline. Uh, that's all going to be pulled in right away before you ever go to interviews. And, and what's fascinating about this is you're really just seeing you know, Hope Hicks, you're looking at three people in this conversation, one of them who has no experience. And so any of these statements that are being made are not only ridiculous, but very damning for this team later on down the road. And Ashley, yet again, the story we're talking about tonight has at its core, really, chaos on the inside and infighting on the inside since the birth of this administration. That, I mean, that's certainly true. And if you even look at some of the clips you played earlier, one of the things that has gotten this president in such trouble is that amid all of this chaos and infighting and backstabbing, the one thing he cares deeply about is loyalty. And it's also the one thing he fundamentally misunderstands. To the president, loyalty is loyalty personally to him. And he's always asking these people who, who serve in his administration, from McCabe to Rosenstein to Comey, to basically pledge their loyalty to him personally and not understanding that their loyalty is to the Constitution or to the agencies they've served. And that has, again, become one of the key.